Hey guys and welcome to Merida. Merida is the capital of the state Yucatan in Mexico and I am going to take you to some beautiful cenotes, also to one of the most beautiful Mayan temples and I'm going to the beach and I will go on a food tour and try all the best Yucatecan food which Merida is actually the gastronomical capital of Mexico. So are you excited? Let's go. Good morning. I'm on my way to Uxmal. I have my waffle that's included uh, in the hostel with me, takeaway. The guy at the hostel was like, aren't you gonna have that to take away when I was putting the syrup on? I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna have it try though. As a Belgian, I know my waffles. Anyway, we're going to Uxmal and the line for the bus tickets is supposed to be really long. So, I think I'm about 40 minutes early, which is too much if you ask me, but let's see. Okay, luckily there wasn't a long line at all and I got an Ahoro bus card. An Ahoro bus, basically you put money on it and they give you extra money, which is a great deal if you ask me. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be my first time using this. Uh, the ticket costs $8.84 and it's one of the more pricier ruins. It's gonna be almost 500 pesos, but it's really worth it. are so beautiful they have so many details on the facade still of decorations which I haven't seen anywhere else yet and there are so many buildings who are very well preserved so it's definitely worth the extra money that you pay The ruins even produced a fascinating echo. There are quite some other things you can visit near the ruins, but I wasn't really interested in them. Okay, so the way back isn't as easy as just taking the bus, because the bus only comes like at 3.30, and we were back there before 12. So that would have been more than three hours to wait for the bus back. So we decided to take a taxi, which was 50 pesos each, which is about two euros and the taxi has taken us to Muna which is a town nearby and now we have to wait for a colectivo to take us to Merida meanwhile I'm trying a pozole that's made of coconut I have no idea what it's gonna taste like it's not my favorite but it's okay Another day, another adventure. I have just arrived in Homun. I took the bus from Merida, which unfortunately I arrived at the bus station just when the other one had left, so I had to wait 45 minutes, which is 45 minutes that I could have been swimming in the cenotes. But anyways, in Homun there are 16 cenotes. In all of Yucatan there are between 5,000 and 8,000 cenotes. They were all created by the meteorite that struck Yucatan, which killed the dinosaur. You can visit the center of the crater, not that far from Progreso, which is the beach town of Merida. And today, I'm visiting my first ever cenotes. I'm very excited. I don't have much time because tonight I'm leaving to Valladolid, but it should be good. I'm going to the ones of Santa Barbara, which are basically three cenotes, a restaurant, and they told me they were okay. So let's have a look. To move between cenotes, you can choose between a bike or a horse-drawn cart on tracks, which is a very bumpy experience. So 
I might have just wrecked my underwater camera within the first five seconds. If that's true, then bad things don't come in threes, they just keep coming. <laughs> like, it's the, the law of Murphy? What's it called? Anyway, we just saw the first cenote and now I am off to the second cenote. Okay, these cenotes only cost 200 pesos and to be honest 10 euros is really not much for how good these cenotes are the water isn't that warm but once you're inside it's actually quite nice and the second one is full of little black fish there are so many stalactites and roots of trees that go all the way down to the water it's really impressive and the water is crystal clear The third cenote was so worth it as well. Uh, you go through a little tunnel and then there is this big open cenote. And I even saw a small catfish. I say small, but it was quite big. And lots of butterflies and dragonflies. And yeah, definitely worth visiting the Anillo de Cenotes here near Mireida. So I'm really glad I made some time for this visit before going to Valladolid. Uh, it's really worth seeing some of the cenotes, at least of all the cenotes that there are in the Anillo de Cenotes, the ring of cenotes in Yucatan. There are so many, but I think I made the right call coming to these ones because all three of them are really nice. Also, the transportation is an experience. Although I do think it's a bit hot for the horses. Still, they seem like they are treated really well and they get enough rest, enough food, so I would recommend it. After a short break from Merida to visit Valladolid and Holbosch, I got back and the first thing on the menu was a delicious food tour. This is a fruit juice with chaya and piña and now we are going to have some gorditas. Pavo, acompañado del relleno negro, el boot, que es esto es el boot, es como carne molida y lo acompañas también con huevo. Walking around the market, we saw a lot of supplies for Día de los Muertos. Also, aquiote, the spices cochinita pibil is made of, and a lot of local seasonal produce. We saw tortilla being freshly made, and I tried a local giant sweet avocado. We spotted panuchos, which is tortilla filled with beans, Next up was a delicious pork sandwich with different yummy sauces. It was so good. No Mexican food tour can be complete without some tacos al pastor. And the last dish was a Yucatecan tamal. Of course, we had to end with dessert. We were so stuffed, but there was still some room for a paleta. We made it to Progreso and I met someone from the hostel on the bus as well. So that was really fun. The time passed. It's an hour on the bus and time flew by. And now I'm in front of the largest pier in the world. So this bridge doesn't even go anywhere. It goes to the terminal of the cruise ships. 
which this is a famous cruise place now there's not many of them and it's nice and easy and a lot of locals from Merida come here and longest pier and a swing and we're just gonna explore a bit and have a walk around this beach is beautiful by the way and there is a lot of wind today which is amazing because it's cooling us off hey guys what's up I met Sarah earlier today here in Merida well we're in Progreso right now but uh my name is Sylvester. I am Mexican American. I was born in Arizona and I was lucky enough to meet Sarah this morning and I've tagged along on her travel to Progreso <laughs> and uh, it's been a great day so far and I hope yeah. you guys enjoy the rest of the video and what's coming next. Yeah, we had so much food. Uh, basically, we went to this place where you get a drink and then for each drink you get lots of food. So we're a bit stuffed now but not completely stuffed yet so we might have more food later but first we'll have a little walk around hey Sil are you coming I'm, I'm busy hold on <laughs> We ended the day at the Callejón del Amor, or Alley of Love, where you can admire some amazing street art and take some cool photos. There was even a Halloween party planned in the alley that night. On the way back, we were blessed with an amazing sunset, and later I had some drinks with people from the hostel. The favorite hostel I stayed at was La 59, or 59. It was located on a beautiful main street five blocks from the city center. This one was in the coziest neighborhood near a park and a local market. It even had an OXO and a supermarket right on the corner of the street. The rooms were very cold though, but there was a nice pool and bar and a kitchen with toast included for breakfast. Nomad's Hostel had an even better location, but no breakfast and stricter rules. The first hostel I stayed at, called Guaya, was in a bad neighborhood, which gave me the worst possible first impression of Merida. Hey guys, I am in Merida, and it's been a couple of days since I've been here, and I haven't talked to you guys yet, basically because I hadn't made up my mind about the city yet. Everyone hypes up Merida because of the food, and I must say it's some of the best food I've had, and the cheapest. But it was also advertised as the safest place in Mexico. And as soon as I left the hostel, I have felt the most unsafe out of every place I've been. Basically, it's said to be the safest place because uh, the cartels don't fight here, uh, the families live here and they have a pact to stay away from Merida. As soon as I left the hostel, all I could see was men and all they could see was me. And I've been feeling very uncomfortable. I don't feel like I'm in the right part of town. Although I really love the hostel and the breakfast is amazing. There are waffles and fresh fruit included every single morning. But I don't feel good there. And Merida has really felt very strange to me. Anyway, let's talk a bit about the food. I had the best meal I have had so far in all of Mexico, which was shrimp fajitas at El Marlen Azul. I also had the cheapest fish tacos that were so good, but then the people at the restaurant started hitting on me, so I haven't felt comfortable to go back. And now I'm actually on my way to have a taco feast and to taste some real Yucatecan cuisine. Taqueria de la Unión has amazing regional options to fill your tacos with. It was difficult to make a choice. Guys, that was so good. I didn't like the chamorro negro that much. I loved the pork belly al pastor. And the other ones were quite good as well. I'm now going for dessert, a traditional marquesita, which is basically a thin waffle with cheese and Nutella. 
I'm not so sure about the cheese, but I'm gonna ask for the traditional one. You can find the food vendors in front of the cathedral. They sell various things like chips, corn on crisps, but most of all, the Marquesitas collect long lines of people waiting in the evening. You can have these thin waffles with any filling you like. The most famous combination is cheese and Nutella, but you can go for cajeta, the goat caramel, or marmalade and cream cheese. There is something for everyone. Okay, so I asked for a traditional one and I think it only has cheese, so not the Nutella, but maybe it's best if I just try the one with the cheese alone first and then see if I would like it with Nutella. Okay. When I came back the second time, I had more of the tacos. We spent some lovely nights at La Negrita, where they have cheap food and booze and great live music. Mercado 60 offers different cuisines, go to Latte Cuatro Sete for breakfast, and La Cubanita for a cheap lunch. When it comes to celebrating Dia de los Muertos this year, a lot was cancelled still. We could see some decorations in the streets and the altar on the main square. But there was nothing on the cemetery on the 31st. On Saturday night, there was a Noche de Catrinas, where they explained what a Catrina was and some would perform. But I mainly enjoyed a Halloween party with the locals, which got crazy. The dance moves and costumes were unmatched, and nobody basically takes a party as seriously as a Mexican. On Monday night, there was a regional dance show on the main square, but that was it. Hey guys, good news. The GoPro, well, the DJI Osmo, is saved. I let it dry and it's working again perfectly. Even the SD card is still working and I'm so happy. <laughs> Thank God. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any of my next Mexico videos. I know that a lot of people have been loving them and thank you if you've written a me message or if you've written a comment or hit the like button. Um, thank you so much and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye!